computer. Hey, how do you want to do it? You want me to just ask some questions and we discuss things? Or... Yeah, I mean, my, my thought was it would be really interesting to talk about bioregional learning and what that might yes. mean. I would also like your perspective on it. So let's do it as a conversation rather than you interviewing me. But, right. but the difference between kind of education and what it would actually mean to do local stroke by regional learning. Yeah. So maybe you can start with sharing a little bit about your, your journey with it. And uh, I know you've done a lot of work also with uh, around the regenerative movement mm -hmm. overall. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe you kick us off. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically it's a reflection. Thinking about our conversation, I was, I was just reflecting earlier on today that um, increasingly I find that word education is so loaded, and and like I'm I'm still your your sentence at the um, um, Planet Local Summit, where you said um, is education possibly the worst crime ever committed against humanity and i was like whoa what a question and then i was like oh you, you've got a real point there um cutting rather close to the bone and that's that sort of made me realize that what you really want to do is to facilitate learning because education is a process of norming it's an it's a normative process of this is a, vi a vision that we will now transfer to you and you Come in aligned, so you can then stamp somebody saying he's an educated person. He he understands how to work within the system we've established, and and learning is much more dynamic. It's it's yeah. a, um, who am I in relationship to this world, um, to my community, to my region, to the ecosystem, and and that is a nice bridge into what regeneration is really all about. Because regeneration is not people always misunderstand it as um, oh yeah, we've had sustainability as a sort of don't do any more damage, so be neutral in your impact. And now there's something we need to do more than that. And so people misunderstand that that just doing good, doing more, is what regeneration is all about. And of course, doing good and doing more is important. But regeneration focuses on something else. It focuses on the capacity of people in place to be able to continue to evolve as expressions of that place. So to be able to question their solutions, to be able to question what they've been educated in, to be able to question assumptions in order to, to maintain the fit of our human expression of life with the rest of the community of life. And, and so bioregional learning is how do we fit in as a community into what this place is about? The story, the geological, hydrological, fauna, flora, biodiversity, cult human cultural story and history of this place, all having its own agency on us. Like we are enacted by this place, whether we're aware of it or not. But the learning bit is how do we attune that? How do we do that? What, what, what would be appropriate participation in that? Okay, that's enough. To, to that's kick good. Off. What do you no, that's, think? That's, uh, that's ringing a lots of things up for me too. So I think uh, for me, re regeneration. Two words I'd add to maybe the the conversation around regeneration. One is uh, remembering. Mm -hmm. So this idea that you know we have um, we're not starting at zero. There are very ancient cultures, ancient knowledge systems which are which aren't even ancient i was just speaking recently i'm like they're saying how do we get the ancient thing i'm like no in, in our cultures actually we talk about living living knowledge systems <laughs> they're not something sitting in a museum they're continuously and you know and they've been juxtaposed ancient versus modern yeah where, you know and i think there's a whole idea that no the 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 whole idea of traditional knowledge systems or uh, were that they were continuously living and updating themselves and and in in active dialogue in response with with wh whatever is happening around them you know so it's not this this stagnant codified thing but it's actually very living and dynamic so but so that remembering of what that is and what to be in a continuous dialogue with life around you with yourself and with life around you which I think that dialogue has been one of the things that have been very deeply broken 
by the um, modern education system, you know. And, you know, I said sometimes um, I, I remember I spoke once with uh, a group connected to our dear friend Helena, and I was saying, you know, in, in the name of literacy, written literacy, textual literacy, we've forgotten the literacy of the river, we've forgotten the literacy of the mountains, we've forgotten the literacy of our ancestors, the literacy of the wild, and, and so on and so forth. So I think that remembering is a very critical aspect of it. Absolutely. It's, it's also like it points towards another massive common misunderstanding of what regeneration is like how many more times do i have to read somewhere oh regeneration is a new concept and so and so are thought leaders in this concept yeah for me that's yeah. like saying respiration or digestion is a new concept yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> regen regeneration is a fundamental process of life and what you've just described is an expression of regenerative culture still present today. These ongoing learning cultures that were actually cultures in the past and to some places, in some places are still in the present, that are inappropriate participation within the ecosystem that brought them forth. They are ultimately expressions of landscape rather than owners of landscape. And 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 the, the worldview is one of kin-centric or, or life as kin. Um, and if we don't come back to that wisdom, which, like, because people, the minute you portray regeneration as the new kid on the block that people should get involved with, you, you've lost it. Because, yeah. because it's it needs to be anchored in every single cell of life itself and every ecosystem. And it needs to be anchored in our human story. Like we have been regenerative expressions of place for 99% of the human journey. And then some of us started to tell a different story and had an effect on the planet that is now putting all of us into serious trouble. Yeah. And I think it, it uh, just adding on to that, I think that um, it has a very profound influence on um, not only who or what we listen to, but how we listen also. Mm -hmm. And so this this notion of, you know, like I like to say that the one thing I learned from my grandmother, uh, my, my so-called illiterate village grandmother, uh, was that, you know, the rest of nature is very much alive and intelligent and communicating with us all the time. We've forgotten how to listen, again, when we become educated. And this listening, um, is a very profound aspect when you start to understand well. And I was just in uh, Vietnam and um, I was so deeply touched by, you know, how much ancestor uh, worship is still happens there. Mm -hmm. uh, despite all of this, despite the, all of the capitalism, I've seen you've seen the worst of capitalism and communism and still somehow survive there. Um, but even in the place I live in, you know, it's beautiful to see that um, almost, you know, in the city itself, even 70% of people can actually still speak to, we speak to our ancestors. Like we have conversations, we're channeling ancestors and you don't have to be a special shaman to do that. But it's actually, you know, my aunts and my cousins are able to do that as well, you know? And so um, so I think the, the listening has become very deep uh, part of this regenerative movement. Um, and and the uh, and the, the the also the quality of the listening becomes a big part of it mm -hmm. as well that we can maybe uh, um, draw attention to in this. Yeah. Explore. No, it's it, it's it's also to listen to multiple ways of knowing and being in the world in the sense of saying, okay, if you want to only in your conversation, admit scientifically, statistically significant data that has been collected in a kind of reductionist process that has as the basis, a bit like education, the norming, the cutting away of the outliers of that bell curve. Like it's mm -hmm. only talking about what's common, what's in the middle, what's the most, the general. But yeah. everything that is the special, the the the, the, the unique, 
in place in culture gets normed away in a globalized version of this is the system that we're educating. And, yeah. and so, so listening for me is, is very much listening to those outlying edges of the bell curve. To, to, to simply say it doesn't have to be commensurable in your system of logic that these people are having conversations with their ancestors. For them, it's meaningful and they get appropriate guidance for how to live in right relationship with place and each other from it. And so what does it matter whether you can scientifically explain it? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and dethrone the dominance of this system, but at the same time, not devalue it because it's also a useful system. Yeah, yeah. The other um, thing, word that I was going to offer to this conversation was um, uh, on regeneration is expansion, expansion of the self. Uh, but I mean that, you know, I think that one of the things, again, that education has done is it kind of is really narrowing our sense of who we are, what we are. Um, you know, I think of, you know, again, my grandmother, um, when I, if I were to ask her, who, who she was, she would give at least an image of uh, 200 other people plus the mountains, plus the river locally. Mm -hmm. And this is a sense of self, you know, like, um, uh, and versus, you know, our, this body and my name and the label and my ego. But there's a different sense of self when we start to expand. And we actually, that helps us then even connect to some, one of your favorite topics I know is Seva. So once we start to expand our sense of self again, uh, Gandhi talked a lot about this when he talked about the idea of Swaraj. Mm. Uh, so again, what is this uh, sense of mastery of the self and, and harmony of the self? So we start to see the deep interconnections uh, that we are all, uh, the web we're part of and connected to. So, so I think when that happens, the sense of seva also really radically opens up uh, yeah. along that side. So maybe you want to comment on Seva also. Yeah, I, I would actually more, more than comment because I'm not an expert in the slightest. I would humbly ask. Um, for me, like one of the core sort of in the Genesis group trained lineage of regeneration or regenerative development, they very often talk about the activating and the restraining force and the potential that can be generated by holding this polarity, but rather than seeing it as an mutually exclusive opposite. And, and for me, a real light went on, and I might be wrong, with the notion of seva not really being, I'm a individual that is enlightened about my own relational being to the point that I know that I need to service something larger than myself, be in service of something larger than myself, but rather than it is actually the resolution of this supposed individual in a supposed, like the ego eco thing that Otto Sharma likes to create another yeah. dualism about. I, I feel like the seva is the way to heal going from a, to, to a pendulum swing type paradigm shift framing from ego to eco because what we really need is healthy selves. Of course, they, they might not be egoic in the way that we now understand, but, but they're, they're still, it's important to hold yourself so you can be in service of others. And the very notion for me of, of seva and also of how regenerative wholeness functions is that is the, the insight that if I want to express my essence, the unique gift that I have that nobody else in the universe has and just like you have a unique gift that nobody else in the universe has. The only way to fully express it has to be in service to the proximate whole, to your family, to your community, to your ecosystem, your bioregion, and the planet. Otherwise, you can't express it. And, and for me, Deva in the Vedanta speaks about that, 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 that we, there is actually no dualism between self and world. But that yeah. the relational world, the only way to be is in seva, because you're actually being within the context of your larger being. Um, and and Anines called it the ecological self. But yeah, uh, am I getting that right? Or 
Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're there. And I think, I mean, the, the thing is that this, um, even I was saying this word swaraj, swa, mm -hmm. is actually, I would read as, you know, um, it acknowledges our multi, us as multi dimensional beings. So we're both this unique individual being, but it's, we're also interconnected. We're part of the whole. And so this is our being at all times. It's not one this or one this. It's we're able to hold the, the multi, multi dimensionality of that. Um, and, uh, that sensibility, you know, and so it's, and it's, it's, is it correct? I mean, in my mind, the, the notion of Swaraj and the notion of Sarvaya are kind of almost twin notions because Sarvaya is the rising of the all. So it's more, yes. the, it's the side of the coin that looks more at the collective and Swaraj is the preparing of the self in such a way that you can actually be in service to, um, the nested holders you, you in it's it's self-reliance so you can be supporting the community so your community at that level can have more self-reliance and then so on and so forth. Is, is yeah that... i mean there's many interprets of swaraj you know in, in the freedom struggle it was more of a political notion that people were saying that we are we are capable of of ruling ourselves and uh or, and then there's a spiritual dimension, which is really this kind of self-awareness and mastery of the self that you are trying to really be de in deep connection to with all of, um, with your different emotions, with your different gifts, with your different, um, um, uh, your dharma almost, if you want to say. Um, and uh, so these are very deeply interconnected concepts, you know, um, but... Um, I think um, Sarvadaya is, is actually also more, it's a, it's been in Indian and South Asian context, also a strategy um, for reaching Swaraj. You know, it's part of a, a larger strategy. You know, there'll be different dimensions of, of Swaraj, Swaraj. So the Sarvadaya movement was really put into a, a more concrete strategy to how do you get there um, in this context. So, but I think, you know, this, um, I want to say that uh, this this regeneration bit, you know, this questions of the self are incredibly important to mm -hmm. to open up again in this whole conversation. So it's not something just that we're doing out there also, but it's in out there and in there. This this art of again this duality by bifurcation uh, maybe needs to be blurred as part of this as well, and we understand, you know, what we're doing out there we're doing in here and what we're doing in here is manifesting out there all the time. Yeah, and it, for me, our friend Bio has made me really do some deep thinking over the last year um, because he, so much of the Western education system focuses on intentionality and agency and the individual as the doer in the world, homo faber. And um, to actually pay attention to that, that is maybe the smaller part of a larger system enacting, and that the yeah. system itself, like our culture and this living biosphere, this this living dynamic planet that we're emerging from, that there's an equal amount of us just being played through that system, like we're an expression of it, and we we don't actually have as much will and as much intentionality and as much agency as we're making ourselves believe. And I think that awareness is now really important because we're just going to go down the rabbit, uh, rapids as humanity on, and many, much of humanity is already going down the rapids with climate change and ecosystems collapse and what, what's what's coming at it, economic collapse. Um, so where, where do you see this the whole kind of ecoversity movement, which for me is also a re-regionalization and re-localization, a, a setting up of bioregional learning centers, um, if you want to put it that way. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think it's very much a part of it. I, I just, you know, the the thing is that ecoversity is when we use it, part of it is a political uh, invitation also, because one of the things that... Um, you know, modern education has done is really um, silence silence many different kind of voices. 
-hmm. not only you know human voices like my grandmother's saying okay these people are illiterate uneducated stupid uh they're not worth listening to but as we were discussing also the voices of the more than human also that that come to us and so i think one is to say that we 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 are opening ourselves to different voices not the usual cast of experts who who have tended to dominate and when you use the other thing about that is also there's a hierarchy so this is one of the things you know i i was learn, running a basically a bio regional center for the last 25 years hmm. the, day, the 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 15 years ago, we started to call it Swaraj University. And the first 10 years, I mean, would meet people in the system and they'd be like, oh, that's very cute. Very nice little initiative you're running. Nice center, cute thing. But we're the university. We're the center of the knowledge production, the sharing, mm -hmm. all of the things close to us. And we are the ones who influence decision making. So I think that this idea of ecoversities is also to start to flip this, this whole, you know, inbuilt, um, knowledge hierarchies that have been here. How, where do we look at for, um, for, you know, how do we create a much more of a dialogical space rather than, you know, um, you know, like we see right now, the recognition of indigenous knowledge is, is really fill, feeding in, has fed into a lot of biopiracy. Hmm. You know, that's where it's gone. It's not like the majority of, if we look at it, is really feeding into that rather than actually a deep respect and, and a deep dialogue with these other ways of knowing, mm -hmm. um, but it's being fed back into the capitalist um, extractive system, right? So I think that we need to create different kinds of, uh, I mean, the, the centers, the spaces, but even how we name them, how we conceive them, that they can actually, I don't think that I'm saying that we don't talk with mainstream university professors or you know, vice chancellors or scientists. But the point is, if it's not in a in, in a mutually dialogical space, then it's very difficult. Then I'm, mm -hmm. you know, then I, are you producing, reproducing the same, uh, what would I call it, knowledge raping pattern that has happened the last mm -hmm. few hundred years? Or are we actually trying to new produce a new paradigm of knowledge and how we how we create it together and share it together? Um, so I, I I hear you in terms of us systems change for education, uh, but but I'm I'm just wondering whether all of that is now something where like so many of the structures that are currently still holding in place the structural violence and the inequality on the planet, um, so many of them I think will begin to crumble in the next. 10, 15, 20 years, simply by the chain reaction of environmental and climate change based and resource depletion and all of that. Um, so I'm more and more wondering, how do we use this window in time, knowing that the bigger, larger system that is currently so oppressive will actually collapse under its own weight to some extent? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I hear you on that. But what I'm saying is that there are, there are, we have lots of reserves. Let mm -hmm. me put it that way. Yeah. Global South. There's a lot of cultural reserves that are sitting there. A lot of different forms of wealth that are still under the under the surface. Mm -hmm. And we need to create platforms where they can actually come out in more meaningful ways, where they can actually. Uh, um, be part of, of how we are actually looking at all of these challenges that we're facing mm -hmm. right now. So, you know, so I'm saying if my grandmother comes into a conversation, what is she going to do? Go and sit in a, a, a university auditorium and it doesn't make any sense for her to be in a dialogue in that space. Or I know traditional healers here, or I know water, water, uh, people who have deep, deep wisdom uh, was water going and sitting in the platforms that have been created for this sharing actually are soul sucking. It's actually, it's, it's almost humiliating for their understandings of knowledge to go and sit in a classroom, right? Yeah. So we need to create the spaces where we actually go to them, not to just study them as that, but actually seeing them as, as the masters, as the people we should actually be uh, supporting and being uh, contributing to what they're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I think there's a different platform that's needed for that. I don't think that that platform that we, that if we use the current platforms that are there in the mainstream systems, those don't invite those things to emerge. They don't invite, I mean, that I've, spirit of seva is sitting there. That hmm. spirit of seva, I think, is the only thing that is going to save us on this planet if we connect to that spirit. Because I've seen how so powerful that is. When people yeah. do it, a whole different energy is being released. Yeah. So it's like you go from uh, Daniel as a small D to a capital D Daniel, you know, like all this energy is, is pent up and waiting to come out. But it has to have the right um, uh, space to express itself and yeah. to be connected to things and, and to manifest. So I think that's what we're trying to do in Ecoversity, saying that you can't just pull this, this thing of extracting some knowledge and sticking it in this other system. Um, yeah, you can do that if you want to copyright it and do it, but it doesn't really mm -hmm. release all of the energies and potentialities that exist with those ways of knowing, you know? But just to give an example that, that things, I mean, this is probably one of the most groundbreaking programs in academia, so it, it's not um, typical for academia, but um, I'm in eight days time, we have 22 people arriving that come from 11 different countries um, and are doing a very exclusive course at ETH Zurich. But we're doing exactly what you just described. We're, we're getting on bicycles and we're moving through the landscape and we're visiting people in their context. We're seeing what they're seeing. We understand their communities and we don't come as a bunch of tourists that say, please give us your PowerPoint about your project and then give us a little walk and then we would like some finger food. Um, but we actually come and say, share with us what, what you're doing and if there's anything we can help with in terms of reflecting, like they can make us work. Yeah. Shovel compost if, they, if, if that's what they need. But they can also ask us, they're currently one of the projects is, is trying to develop a carbon offsetting program for the Balearics that isn't just another BS carbon. So it's trying to yeah, yeah. do carbon onsetting rather than offsetting, including the hydrological cycle, social flaws and all of that. And this group of people, the learners that we're traveling with, are all highly skilled individuals that have already had a career and are now doing this course to further their learning. And so they have a lot to offer. And so that, in that sense, it becomes... A, a listening and an offering, like a, a, a reciprocity yeah, that that may or may not lead to more, but um, at least we're not coming as an extractive visitor. We we um, also in the process, which is where the bioregional learning comes, we're actually connecting initiatives in a regional field into a into connection because we're physically traveling between them. And mm -hmm. these organizations at the local level need to be more in connection. So we're, we're, we're helping to map a existing regenerative potential in the area by visiting individual projects that are already doing amazing work. Because um, that's another thing that I think is, is worth highlighting when we're talking about regeneration in this context is that it's regenerative cultures or regenerative education or regenerative this, that, and the other. If, if you project it as some kind of future utopia that we now need to create, you've again lost it. Yeah. Because it's, it's about what you're saying. It's about finding the ambers. Like you're saying, under there's so much wisdom that is still there. Yeah? So th that is the wisdom of our regenerative cultures of the past and in some places present that is actually humanity's survival pattern. This is how we yeah. have managed to be here on this planet for that long. And it's like embers of a fire that Western modernity and education and globalization has almost put out. And there's ashes over it, over the embers, but all you need to do is blow the ashes and fan those embers and that fire can come back up. And the work of regeneration for me is in every single place finding those embers where life's regenerative impulse is still being expressed through real people who are in right relationship uh -huh, and nurturing them. And that's, I, I mean, I'm talking to the, like, I mean, you, that's what you've been doing for a long time. So I'm, yeah, yeah. 
No, I think I appreciate that's a good step. You know, the, the thing is, the only thing I would offer is that these these things, um, so I remember, you know, I've, I met when I first came back to India about 25 years ago, I was, uh, there was an organization working with traditional healers. Mm. And I remember going to them and, you know, with a notepad and saying, okay, tell me all the, all your recipes that you have for different medicinal plants and how you make them and and getting very frustrated because I was in a rush and I was trying to put them in a rush that, okay, give me everything right now. It's part of, I only have a few days and I need to know everything so then I can, you know, take it and share it with the world. But what I realized in that is that a lot of these, the, the, and they were, I got very frustrated because they, they were, they'd start sharing something and they changed the topic. <laughs> to something else <laughs> and uh, that I realized that you know the process problem is with me that I don't have the time and I'm not willing to make the deep commitment the apprenticeship that is needed to actually take these as sacred knowledges you know so somebody comes to me even and they're like okay we have a day tell us what you've been learning in 25 years about regeneration bio regionalism you know indigenous knowledge and like you, you spent 15 years in that stupid school and university and you want me to tell you everything in one day. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. You know, like you need to, there's a different kind of uh, apprenticeship process that one has to go to and surrender into to actually be able to recover this. So I think I would just want, that's why we're trying to create these platforms where people can go through and then they can um, start to practice they can start to make sense of what it means internalize it in themselves See? they can start to bring it into rather than you know um like i'm wary these days of a lot of these wisdom weekend weekend workshops to absolutely you know, See, but so this is this is exactly this is exactly where i think the, the word learning and the word bioregional connect because it has to be place source place based within context and when people commit to becoming in seva, in right relationship to their community in place over the long term, then the whole process of continuing to learn more about your bioregion, the watershed, the plants, the medicinal properties, the local entrepreneurs, what's missing, what's, what's, what's the potential, uh, all, all of that, but also understanding the changes that we're now no longer can, can avoid in terms of less rainfall or more erratic rainfall and all, all of that so we can actually rebuild what and this is what Swaraj is again about that we need to rebuild the community resilience infrastructure of basic provisioning as close to home as possible at local and regional scales and within that that's like rather than saying well we need to educate people so they can do that job that job as a community is the education of the future. That is bioregional learning. How do we come home to place? How do we relate to this place as a regenerative keystone species rather than an extractor species? Yeah. How do we create systems of governance of local of, the, of this place that we can avoid that people from other parts of the world come here and don't care that we are a regenerative species and continue to act the extractive species pattern. Um, all, all of that for me is the long journey of bioregional learning. We're all just at the beginning of it again. In some places, there's much deeper roots and much more to draw from. In other places, education as a crime against humanity has done such a radical job that there's so much unlearning to be done before we can even have the conversation because otherwise we, we're spinning in circles of our own worldview patterns. Uh, yes, yes. Anyway, we're, we're probably... I, a, I just close it with, you know, there's that saying that don't confuse the map for the terrains. Mm -hmm. So that this idea that's very easy, we're, we're very fast to pick up maps, but, you know, actually the work of uh, being with the terrain and building relationship with the terrain is a very um, uh, deep and, and profound process. And, you know, I think that's the beautiful invitation once you start doing that. Um, Many things I've in my own journey have opened up within me when I've reconnected. I see it with my daughter because I see her kind of connection to this place. I was trained with this idea of mobility is king, you know, go where you're getting paid the most dollars. 
but actually when you one is deep connected to place again and things there's a whole different sense of belonging of beingness that that emerges with that and so i think that's the invitation we are uh, we, i think collectively inviting people into and and the other thing is like let's i was just having somebody here and he was saying talking about you know saying some things about individual behavior change mm-hmm. you know so well, let me reduce my com- consumption my waste this i think that, i said to him that's all really good for your own inner spiritual practice but the work if we want to do things outside in the world also to deal with these crises we need to start to think about team sense mm-hmm. of team you know how do i work with others who are different from me how do i work with the more than human again we have these beautiful examples in india of, of deep partnership i mean the amazon itself is an example of the human and more than human partnership that can emerge when we enter into that sacred covenant with 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 uh, with life again or in india you know there's these living bridges mm-hmm. these amazing bridges i don't know if you've seen those yet uh, incredible incredible when we enter into this very sacred relationship so how do we come start to see ourselves as a team again is is uh, is i think part of this work of the bioregionalism as well and i think you you're right when you said it earlier seva is at the heart of it and you i actually for what i'm taking home from this conversation is that you said if we don't get into the seva understanding of how life is a nested wholeness um we don't have a future because that is the way to fit in that is the way to be regenerative as life um and ultimately even be ready to let go of your own life in service for a larger story um yes so great thank, thank you so much sir. Wonderful. wonderful i'll just hit thanks for the ecoversities reimagining yeah. education conference for listening with us exactly and sorry that we couldn't do this live but i'm actually with the students doing a bioregional learning journey um while the yeah. the, the conference is happening so thanks so yeah. much we really look forward to hearing more about that we'd love to hear more about it when once it's and maybe we can do another call and you can share about that